Numerical optimization problems may include continuous or discrete variables. So discrete variables, an example of those are things like binary variables, where the solution can be 0 or 1, or integer variables, for example, where it can be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, or just general discrete values, such as my pipe can be you know, a quarter inch, a, a half inch, one inch, so they're discrete values that aren't necessarily at integer, val integer uh, quantities. So we're going to set up and solve a numerical optimization problem that involves integer values. Uh, you can also have binary values if you just constrain the integer values between 0 and 1. We're going to solve this, uh, this optimization problem here where we have four variables. And in this, we're going to make variables 3 and 4. Those are going to be integer values. So they're still going to be between, you know, 1 and 5, but they could only be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And then we have some continuous variables, which are x1 and x2. So those can continuously vary between 1 and 5. So we're going to uh, just graphically represent this. If I look at this contour plot here, I have x2, which is one of my continuous values. And then I have my constraint, which is my inequality constraint right there, where the product has to be greater than 25. That's represented by this red line right here. And then I have an equality constraint uh, as opposed to my inequality constraint. And that's going to be this blue line. So that has to equal 40, as you can see right here. So the solution has to lie along that blue line. But now I've enforced an integer constraint on x4. So the only possible values that it can be are uh, x4 equals 1, x4 equals 2, or x4 equals 3. And so if I just draw lines over, these are some of my potential solutions right here. Okay, and I need to be able to find uh, the best value among all those potential solutions. So one of the issues with mixed integer nonlinear programming problems as opposed to linear programming, quadratic programming, or nonlinear programming, whenever you have integer variables, it can become a combinatorial problem of finding the solution, especially you know, for beyond this simple example where we only have two integer values, it would be easy to just explore all the different possibilities. If you had uh, multiple variables with many different integer uh, you know, as, as integers, then you could, if you wanted to explore all of the different values, it could be quickly prohibitive based on the number of options that you'd have to choose from. So we want to set this up and solve this with a, a gradient-based optimizer that's going to be able to find a solution potentially much faster. We we'll use Gecko to do this, and this is example number 10 of the tutorials for, a, for a Gecko. So if you just search for AP Monitor Gecko, it should bring you, uh, you should see one of these links like this one uh, where it'll bring you to these example problems and it will also have the source code for this problem as well. Okay, so we're going to go through and uh, set up and solve this. I'll also talk about some of the options for the mixed integer uh, nonlinear programming solver, which is going to be APOPT. So we'll First of all, uh, you'll need Gecko. So if you don't have it yet, just pip install uh, Gecko. And if you want to upgrade, you can just do the double dash upgrade. And then it should go out and get the latest version of Gecko for you. If you don't have it yet, you can just leave off the uh, double dash upgrade. Okay, and once you have that, then we're going to first of all just create our Gecko model. And then we're going to, um, for, uh, first of all, we'll, we'll do some uh, variables. Okay, value equals 1, and then lower bound equals 1, upper bound equals 5. So that's a, this is going to be for x1. Now we do have x3 and x4, which are going to be, uh, they're going to be integer values. So here's x2, 
and then we have x3 which is just going to be a copy of x2 but now we have uh, you can do integer equals true and that makes it an integer variable that's going to be between 1 and 5 and then we'll also do it for x4 but the value the initial guess is going to be equal to 1 okay and then what we'll do is um, define our equations and the first one is going to be the product of all the values is going to be greater than or equal to 25 and then the next one is going to be the sum of all the squares of the values squared x4 squared is going to be equal to 40 don't forget the double equal sign there and then we have our objective function as well so our objective is going to be x1 times x4 times x1 plus x2 plus x3 okay plus and then uh, we'll do plus plus x3 okay so there's our objective uh, right there with the the all four of the variables that are participating in the objective so it's a nonlinear problem because the constraints uh, and the objective are nonlinear and then we can solve this and uh, I'll say display equals false just so we don't see the solver output but you'll notice if we print the solutions here we have x1 value x2 value x3 value and x4 value if I print those then I'm gonna get non uh, integer solutions there for x3 and x4 it's 3.82 and 1.38 so what I want to do is just change my solver to be equal to the APOP solver. So that's a mixed integer nonlinear programming solver. And there you can see that the new optimal solution has uh, x3 equals to 4 and x1 equals to 1. Uh, so that's the APOP solver. Let's just display the solver output. Okay, so here's the solver output. You can see that it, uh, this is using a branch and bound method where it finds the lowest relaxed solution with an iteration one and then it uh, starts to find integer solutions and then when it's within a gap tolerance it evaluates the gap and then it's going to uh, evaluate the solution and there you can see that the objective is 17.53 now if I had uh, what I'm going to do now is just change that back to solver equals three and solve the uh, you know the solution with IPOP that is not a mixed integer nonlinear programming solver it's just continuous and there you can see the the solution is equal to 17.01 that's the objective okay so objective is 17.01 but when I enforce the integer constraints then the objective is going to get a little bit worse because I've added some additional constraints that those variables have to be integer form and there you can see that the objective went to 17.53 so I couldn't minimize it as far because I said that x3 and x4 have to be integers now there's a number of uh, solver options that you'll want to use when setting up and solving these types of problems I'll just show a couple of these and we have solver options equal and then I'm going to say this is open and close square brackets and then I'll put these in different uh, you know you can do MI NLP maximum underscore uh, iterations and we'll do space and then I'll put 500 there Okay, and if you want to add additional options, just separate them with commas. And I'm going to continue on to the next line here. And then uh, the next one I'll say is, um, let's see, I'll do a MINLP gap.
tolerance. Okay, when it finds the optimal solution, this is a, a standard uh, way to uh, do the you know termination criteria for an MINLP problem. And then I'll put one more in there as well. Okay, and this one we'll do um, the NLP maximum iterations. Okay, so the sub problems that it's solving when it's doing the branch and bound, I'll set that equal to 50. So that can prevent you from iterating a long time on solutions that uh, might not be productive in finding a solution. Okay, and then you can run it again and you can see, you know, sometimes you have a little different, uh, you know, solution if you increase the gap tolerance too high. Um, you know, so for example, here's my gap tolerance. If I set that at five instead, it's going to find that first integer and say, well, that's, that's good enough. I'll go with that one. Um, and so you might be able to get a slightly faster solution if you change some of these options. Okay, I don't necessarily recommend that high of a gap tolerance. Okay, so I'm going to put it back 0 0.01. But there is the um, there is the solution with some of the options. If you want to get more options on that, I'd recommend just going to apopt.com, and there should be some more options that are listed here. Let's see if I can find those. Okay, so it gives. Uh, there's download, some of the download options. There are some of the options that you can play with with the APOPT solver. Okay, so this is a tutorial on solving a mixed integer nonlinear programming problem with Gecko and using the APOPT solver.